Okay, this is going to be a three-part series on how to build a local storage-driven shopping cart. Now, I've built a very basic uh, interface here. Uh, the first video is going to be talking about the interface, the user interface, the user experience, how the pieces fit together, the CSS, and the basic functionality. Second part is going to get into the cart itself, so how to structure the cart, how to build a cart object, how to store the data, work with the data. And then the third part is going to be how do we get the products, bring them in from some source using Ajax, um, construct the page, have the products and the cart be able to talk to each other, so the page and the cart. So that's the three parts. So let's dive into the interface itself. Uh, on the page, I've got this area over here on the left where I've got products. Every time I load the page, I'm fetching all these products in a JSON file from an external source, loading them into the page, and I'm giving them each an image, a price, a title, a description, and this button. If I click on the button, it adds it to the cart. And then you can increment or decrement the value or the, the quantity for each one inside the cart. The um, I'm using CSS Grid to lay out these parts. And then for the cart, this is just a vertical list. Uh, I used Flexbox and CSS Grid together here. So on the right, this is one element. And then on the main part, this is another. So these two parts are a Flexbox row. Inside there, we've got a grid and then just a stack of divs. That's really all there is. So let's take a look at the uh, HTML and CSS. In the HTML, it's really very simple. I've got a header and a main. That's it. The header's got the H1. The main has those two sections I was talking about, products, which is going to be the uh, CSS grid, and cart, which is just going to be a vertical stack of divs. In the CSS, uh, if we come up here, I've got some basic settings, just you know, uh, using the default uh, native font stack. So this will give me the native font, regardless of whether it's on a phone or a tablet or a, a laptop. It'll this lists off pretty much everything that will cover OS X, Windows, iOS, Android, all the different fonts. Uh, I've got a dynamic font size right here. I'm using calc to have a size of font that will resize itself as the page changes. So as I shrink and grow this page, you'll see that the whole thing's responsive and the size of the fonts change as well as the size of everything else. Um, yeah, okay, so we can jump down through most of this stuff. A uh, little bit of padding. Okay, here we are, main. Main and products. So main is the container for products and cart. That's this part right here. This is the main structure of the layout. So main contains those two parts. It's display flex. Flex direction is row, no wrap. So it's going to be a row across with two elements inside of it. Uh, space between, so I don't want the spaces on the left and the right. I already have padding created for the main on the left and right, so I don't want to add more here. I'm just going to say space between. And I've got a minimum width. I don't want it shrinking any more than that to kind of mess with my layout. The products, this is that grid with the six different products. So display grid. Repeat three times one fraction. So there'll be three columns inside the grid. Grid gap one REM, so that's both the vertical and the horizontal. It's going to have that. And then the flex properties for products and cart. This is how they will relate to each other inside of main. So I'm using display grid for the contents of products, but products itself is flex grow one, flex shrink one, and auto. So it's going to fill up all the remaining space after 20% has been allotted for the cart. So we've got 80% for products, 20% for cart. That's what this is going to give us. Each one of the cards, this is the products. If we come back here, this little black outline, this is a card. Inside the card, we have an image. There's a heading, a paragraph, a button, and then this is a div with the price being written, and I've rotated it slightly over top of the image. So card, border, a little bit of padding, 
give it a max width, position relative. I mean, we can play with this max width, bump it up to you know, 200 if we wanted. Makes it a little bit bigger. So that's just the outline, the container for each one of these. The image, width 100%, so we want the image to fill up the entire card with the exception of the padding that's on the left and right of it. And I put a contrast filter on there for each of the images because these were black images and I wanted to just tone that down a little bit for the page. So I put a contrast filter on each one of them to make them more, more of a uh, dark gray than a black. The price. Now these are position absolute inside of something that's position relative. So if you've watched my video on that or you know how that works, you know that wherever the card goes, this price is going to follow and it will be positioned relative to the top left corner of the card. Then I've rotated it slightly. I gave it a, a, a black and a white shadow to make sure it stands, on, stands out on any background. Um, green color text, bold font size. That's about it. So there's the price that's going to be sitting on top of this image because of its positioning. The heading, which is the title of the product. The paragraph is the text itself. All we've done is put some font sizes in there. The button, I put a blue border with blue text. And always important, when you're building things that you want users to click on, cursor pointer is a useful thing to have. That's why we get the little hand when we put the cursor over the button. We want to make sure that we're doing that. Okay, then the cart items. So that's everything for the products themselves. Now the cart items over here, same sort of idea. It's a box, but this one's only got a border on the bottom. I'm not putting it on the other sides, just underneath each one. Padding around it, position relative, so I can do the same thing with the price and rotate it, except this one's a little bit gray, and I mean, we can shift it around. Right now I've got it one REM from the right. Uh, it's got a 30% of the width. We don't have to give it 30% of the width. That's just the amount of space that I gave it. Um, kind of a, a, a lighter gray, a medium gray color for this text. We don't want it to really jump out. The quantity is the thing that I've made the darkest. I want the quantity to stand out. And we've got that cursor thing working on the controls in here, so the plus minus button, so that we can increment or decrement. So it's these little touches, it's these little things. I mean, I haven't put a lot of effort into the design of this. I wanted to make it just functional. But when you add things like the cursor change, if somebody's on a browser, that's really going to help them out. On a phone, you're not going to see this. You're not going to get that different cursor because it's your finger that's doing the touching. But it's nice to have these little touches. And uh, then similar to what we did before, we've got the title. It's got width 70%. This has got width 30%. So we're making sure that the title doesn't ever go over underneath the price. And then the controls. This is what's sitting underneath the title. This is the container. This is a div that holds the two, the plus minus button as well as the quantity. And what we've done here is we've made it display flex as well. So it's going to be a row that will space things out, space between. So this button goes to the left edge, this button goes to the right edge, and then the rest of the space is going to be in here. So you've got the quantity, and then the gaps are going to be on either side of this. So that's what we're doing with space between and display flex is we're making that nice row so we don't have to give exact measurements. We don't have to figure out exactly how big the buttons are going to be or how big the quantity is going to be and have it resize. We'll just use flex. Simple, easy solution. Same idea. Use the same blue that we did in the buttons on the other side. So we pick up this blue color to use it over here. And that's what we're using for all the buttons. The green here, we picked it up, the same color green inside the, uh, the text for the price. Okay, so that's the basic layout. That's the CSS. Um, so I'm going to give you copies. I will put a copy in each one of the videos of all the HTML, CSS, the JavaScript, and the JSON file that's coming in with the products. Uh, in terms of the functionality on the page, 
we have a DOM content loaded event, which is firing when the page loads. When we do that, there's a few things that we need to get need to do to get ready. We need to go and get the products. This is where we're going to do our Ajax call off to the server to bring back the JSON that is going to be the products. We need to initialize our cart. So we're going to check in local storage to see are there items here, and if there are, put those on the page. So once we've initialized the cart, then we're going to show the cart. Now. Something to keep in mind with this is that we're using, in this example, local storage only. So that means that the cart is bound to whatever device I'm using. So if I'm on Chrome or I'm on Firefox, I'm on my laptop, that's where the cart is. I'm not going to get the cart if I start on one device and then try to finish my order someplace else unless I add that functionality. So that's a piece of functionality that will require some server-side programming as well we'd have to take our cart and upload that to the server to save it. And we'd have to save it associated with a user account. That's something else that I'm not doing in here. I'm just talking about how to save the data, how to manage this. Now, it, would, it will give you insights into how to do that sort of thing, but I'm not specifically going to be talking about that. This is going to focus on products, cart, moving them in and out, keeping track of the quantity, keeping track of the price. Uh, so we have increment and decrement functions. These two functions right here are the plus and minus buttons inside the cart. We've got get products to go get them. When the data comes back, we're going to build that grid of products. Add item is for the buttons inside of products when we want to add something to the cart. Show cart shows all the contents. And then we've got a common error function. Now I'm not doing anything on the screen. This would be something that you could definitely add. And I've got a few challenges for you guys that I'll leave as notes at the end um, on each one of the videos, some things that you can work on so that you can experiment with the code. One of them being, do something in the interface. Don't just console log the error, but actually display a message to the user. So build a div, make it appear, and then make it remove itself after a certain amount of time. Okay, so that's it for the first video. So your challenge is build something that's going to display the error message. Uh, the second thing is take all the CSS and make it into an external file. And the third thing is on the page itself, these images, you'll notice that they're all different sizes. So what we want to do is we want to keep them the same width, but we want to set sort of a maximum height on these. We want to truncate it. So see if you can get these images to be all perfectly square. So the same width, same height, truncated. One possible way that you can approach that is try making the image into a background image. Create a square that is cropped to a certain size, and then it's going to be cropping the image that you put as the background. So give that a shot and come back to watch part two. Thanks for watching.